Hi, everyone. Delfino Aguilar here, SVP of Wholesale Production at Kind Lending on our newest edition of Dell Talk with a very special guest today, Mr. David Stevens. How are you, David? Good to be with you. Good to see you today. Yeah, I'm excited for our interview, David. You know, for those of them that don't know you, you're currently the CEO of, of Mountain Lake Consulting. You were also part of HUD at different posts. You also were president and CEO of the MBA. Um, awesome. You, you, you with a lot of other a lot of other great experience, right? Over your 38 years, correct? That's correct. Yeah, a lot of a lot of interesting roles. A lot of interesting roles. Yeah, we we were talking about questions we were sending you, right, as we prepare for these and. You know, especially working at HUD and being a part of the NBA, which we're going to talk a little bit about the NBA here as well. Um, we obviously, obviously, at Kind, we feel it's a really great organization. But share with us a little bit of of which what experience was the most fascinating of either one of those um, experiences you had of those positions. I mean, I'm sure you had a lot, especially working yeah. at HUD, right? Well, look, so the um, I started my career as a loan rep. Uh, back yeah. in the early 80s and somehow worked my way up to the point where uh, I had s- several senior executive jobs. And when President Obama uh, was sworn in uh, in January of 2009, I got a call shortly thereafter, uh, yeah. first week of March, asking me to come to the White House. And um, and it was a really strange experience because I figured they just wanted to learn what's going on in the housing market, mortgage market, yeah. because we were in the, you know, the, the grips of the Great Recession yeah. uh, and it, it was a crisis. So I went in on a Friday afternoon, went into the White House, which I've done the tour, but I've never been in the West Wing. <laughs> right. And uh, and, you know, I proceeded to give them a lecture on how I thought FHA was being picked off and what they needed to do. Yeah. I'm driving home. I call my wife. I said, uh, <laughs> well, they're never going to want to talk to me again. And next thing you know, I'm being asked to uh, go through Senate confirmation and get sworn in as part of the president's yeah. team. I'll tell you just very briefly, I worked on the yeah. housing team. Uh, I yeah. met with the president uh, frequently. Uh, yeah. In fact, on my wall behind me, that's a bill signed by the president. Um, and that's his pen. Uh, we did awesome. a lot of really good work. And yeah. um my first meeting was about 12 days after I got confirmed by the Senate in 2009. Mm-hmm. I was called to a meeting, my first formal meeting with the president, the Treasury Secretary, mm-hmm. obviously the HUD Secretary, several others. And uh, long story short, I end up sitting at the table with the president. And the very first question that the president asks, nobody at the table can answer. Uh, <laughs> Tim Geithner, the right. Treasury Secretary, looks down the table at me. He goes, Stevens, answer the question. So here yeah. you are. <laughs> right. No, a, a guy who's just a loan rep with a Bachelor of Arts, of, of, of arts degree from University of Colorado. Yeah. With all these PhDs. That, yeah. that was just, you know, it was an amazing experience. Um, MBA yeah. was cool. Uh, yeah. Being a, you know, being at Freddie Mac and running the single family business, mm-hmm. running a big real estate company called Long and Foster on the East Coast. All of these were just great experiences, but that was truly the most uh, unique and at a very unique time uh, right. in our history. Right. Yeah, I can I can just imagine those those how that was because a lot was going on in our in our in our country at the time, yeah. right? So a lot of decisions were being made at the time too. Is there anything you know when they look over? Is it something that you were prepared for? Is it something you? You know, how does that work, right? Because you're thinking about that. And obviously, it worked out well, right? You guys came yeah, up with some great so, policy. So it's uh, yeah. a little picture down. So the yeah. um, the uh, so I'll, I'll, the, briefly, I arrive at the yeah. White House. I walk into the Roosevelt Room, which is right across from the Oval Office. Yeah. And every senior official in the, in, in, in uh, finance for the president is in that room. Yeah. Um, there's a big table and there's chairs all around the back of the room. And most folks, uh, you know, it, it's cabinet secretaries mostly at the table, right. and then staff and stuff sit at the back uh, chairs, etc. So I walked mm-hmm. into the I walked into the Roosevelt room. I moved immediately to the back couch with another <laughs> uh, compatriot who I did a lot of work with. Right. And I'd never met Geithner before. He looks at me. He goes, "You're Stevens, right?" I go, "Yeah." And he goes, yeah. "You got to sit at the table." So I wow. I picked a seat at the ta- at the table. It became my seat for every meeting. And when the president walked in, he said, look, I've read all the material. 
Um, I only have one question. Can someone explain what a warehouse line is? So <laughs> I'm going, you know, this is a, 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 an easy one, right? Right, and, right. And the table goes silent. Everybody in their tables either got a master's or a PhD from Yale right. or Harvard or whatever. <laughs> right, right, scholars. Right. And Geithner, that's when he looked at me, he goes, Stevens, answer the question. So I explained to the president what a warehouse line is, but it was pretty intense. I bet. To be, you know, your first man in the White House and all of a sudden you look up and Obama's staring at you intently in the eyes. Right. <laughs> yeah. And from yeah. that point forward, I met with the president every couple of weeks. And um, that's awesome. It became a, a regular event, but it, it was it was pretty intimidating to start off that way. I, I, I can, I bet, I bet. I'm sure the president's very personal, makes everybody feel comfortable around him, right? So if, I guess- it, it yeah. was all business, but yeah, I mean, it was, yeah, yeah. there was no yelling. I'll, I'll tell you that. There was no yelling. There you go. There you go. There you go. You know, and, and part of that, you know, in 2018, you were named Mortgage Professional of the Year, right? Um, you know, how how was that important that obviously it's a very big recognition, you know, from the magazine. So how important was that for you? It was nice. I mean, look, yeah. I was retiring. Um, yeah. You know, I've been fighting cancer, which I've been very public about. Mm -hmm. uh, they had never had a national mortgage professional of the year. That was their first award. I, I thought it was very awesome. generous of them to do that. It's funny uh, on my way out of the NBA, I received a lot mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, accolades from various yeah. places. NAREP uh, gave me no, the yep. found, founders award. In fact, I was uh, in the, f the first receiver of the founders award myself and one other person, Ernie awesome. Reyes, um, yep. who uh, you would know if you're part of NAREP and, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and that was really great as well. So it's just, you know, it's been a long career. We all get recognized in different ways yeah. uh, when you've had some success. And right. uh, I really appreciated that. Yeah, that's awesome. It's it's a great recognition. Thank you, David. I mean, all the all the stuff you put out on social media, your articles, it, it brings a lot of things forward for us in our industry. Thank you for that. You know, talking a little bit about social media, you're we're going to talk definitely about the market here. But, you know, we're active a lot on social media. The world has kind of changed. A lot on that, you know, big time. Obviously, you got you got TikTok, you have Instagram, you have all these things. We're now doing TikToks, so they're fun. Um, uh, you know, tell us how you do. You focus a lot on social media. I know that you write articles. You're you're heavily on yeah. Housing Wire is one of them. Hey, yeah. look, I've been a, I've been a techie from the very beginning. I'm, I'm I, you awesome. know, I go in and I go to anytime my neighbors or friends have a problem, they call me to work on their technology. Awesome. <laughs> I was big on social media from the beginning, but it was interesting when yeah. LinkedIn first was getting started. Yeah, um, they picked uh, 100 influencers around the world. Um, nice. You know, they had Bill Gates and, you know, uh, just every name you'd possibly imagine was right. Steve Jobs. Was, was were all influencers. Right. Right. I guess in the mortgage finance sector, they didn't they, they were they had slim picking. So I got <laughs> I got asked if I would be considered being an influencer. And this nice. is, you know. 14, I don't know how long ago it was. And, yeah. uh, but I agreed yeah. to it. And suddenly my followership blew wide open. I have well, I've got 1.2 million followers on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, it's been a great platform for work. Um, right. I know TikTok, uh, you know, Twitter to me is sort of a yelling fest. And I, I once had about 8,000 followers. I actually yeah. dropped off of Twitter for a while. Yeah. It's been like the way behaviors on there. I love TikTok, yeah. frankly. I get, yeah addicted to it during my spare time. Well, there you but go. I really find, I really find LinkedIn to be for business purposes uh, yeah. and sharing in our industry. Right. I find it to be the most valuable. And as you know, I, I write articles a lot. A lot of it gets published uh, yep. housing wire more, more often than others. But mm -hmm. I always use LinkedIn as my primary vehicle for uh, distributing that information. But yeah, I mean, social media is critical uh, yeah. particularly for millennials uh, and, and right. more to, be able to access information. So yeah, yeah very that's valuable. awesome. Yeah. yeah, very valuable. We're 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 big on on the TikTok. Jessica, one of our marketing specialists. So guys, you guys are watching this. You know, Dave Steven loves some TikToks. Let's produce some uh, <laughs> some TikTok there. So, so Dave, <laughs> transition a little bit about about the market, right? I mean, yeah. the world is that would change dramatically in March. I remember where I was March 10th when you know we announced the the closing of the country, right? Everybody quarantining. You know, our, our industry changed dramatically and it's changing. You know, a lot of announcements of companies coming together. You know, how have you seen uh, the mortgage industry change over the last 13 months? Because it's been, you know, since March, you've seen a lot. It's a loaded question, right? Like yeah. a lot has changed, a lot has happened. What, what what do you see? What are your thoughts on the change and where we're going? Well, 
Look, who yeah. would have thought that a, a, a pandemic brought on by a virus would have made billionaires out of so many independent mortgage bankers? Literally, um, yeah. it's it's a crazy environment uh, that that we have seen, and it's all because of the Federal Reserve. Uh, the Fed jumped in with another round, of, the biggest round ever of quantitative easing, mm -hmm. uh, created a technical short in the market drove rates down into the twos, and we were mm -hmm. we refinanced the entire universe. On top yeah. of it, yeah. unlike the last recession, the Great Recession of 08, mm. uh, demographics are here and now. Uh, the peak buying year for, for first-time homebuyers in America is age 34. Some, mm -hmm. some say 35. So uh, that's, the that's, that's the biggest year uh, for any age cohort to begin buying a home. Okay. The biggest millennial cohort... Uh, is still is is has not hit us yet. So the the 34 year old cohort is about three mm -hmm. years away from us. So um, uh, we've got a we've got several years of just great demographic. That's my assistant in the background. <laughs> uh, my dog. Right. There you the go. Part, the part of home recording. But the <laughs> um, but you know the reality is that we're in a really unique marketplace, right? It's created rates combined with demographics created uh, an incredible event here that drove mm -hmm. mortgage origination volume to the biggest year in history, mm -hmm. uh, right on top of 2003 as, as uh, the top two years in American history for mortgage originations. Mm -hmm. But this is unlike the Great Recession or a bubble because it was actually built on really good credit brought on by uh, de core demand of the biggest demographics uh, uh, segment in our history, bigger than the baby mm -hmm. boom generation mm -hmm. that wants to buy a home. And as you know, right now, uh, mm -hmm. we're all facing challenges uh, as we look forward in terms mm -hmm. of rates are just a little higher, enough to slow refis, uh, and uh, there's not enough inventory. So, you know, cash out refinancing and being able to put in really strong bids uh, and be the most efficient in the transaction when you put an offer in right now is going to be, is going to win the day because sellers right. own the market, at least for the, probably the rest of this year. The rest of this year. Yeah. yeah. You know, there was an art, there was an article that was put out um, recently. I think housing wire put one out that, you know, some, in some places over a hundred bids on properties. In some cases, you know, it's just such a big challenge here locally in San Diego. It's a challenge for sure. You know, as you know, we manage the whole country and especially in Florida, even parts of Utah now are getting real tight, you know, in the yeah. bidding war. It's interesting. Hi, everyone. Delfino Aguilar here, your SVP of wholesale production at Kind Lending and your host of Dell Talk that's powered by Kind Lending. I hope you guys enjoyed our first segment with Dave Stevens. Our next episode is going to dive deeper into future market conditions. We're going to talk about the MBA and also what's the new Biden administration's new forecast for what they're doing in the market. I hope you enjoy it. Have a great day.